are looking live at the campus of St. Anselm College here in Ma Manchester, New Hampshire. Good evening, I'm Britt Hume. Tonight, Fox News Channel and Fox News Radio are presenting a unique presidential candidate forum. The five candidates we've invited tonight all poll in double digits in the real clear politics average of national polls. We have streamlined the rules of our forum. There are no opening or closing statements, and each candidate will be allowed two minutes to respond to each question. Rebuttal time, if needed, it will be one minute. We have timing lights for the candidates to see and they will be on the honor system to stay within the limits. Now to introduce the participants is the sole moderator of our forum, Chris Wallace, the host of Fox News Sunday. Chris? Britt, thank you. One of the five men sitting at this table tonight will be the Republican presidential nominee. We hope the discussion over the next 90 minutes will help you choose which one it should be. Here now are the five candidates. Rudy Giuliani, a former U.S. attorney and two-term mayor of New York City. Fred Thompson, former senator from Tennessee. Mike Huckabee, who served 10 years as governor of Arkansas. Mitt Romney, former governor of the neighboring state of Massachusetts. And John McCain, now serving his fourth term as U.S. senator from Arizona. Gentlemen, welcome. Let's get to it. Taxes. Is a, are a big issue in New Hampshire, which of course is strongly anti-tax, and so let's start there. Governor Romney, you have, have gone after two of your rivals here at the table, Mike Huckabee and John McCain, for their record on taxes, but you don't mention that in your first year as governor, you raised fees on individuals and corporations by more than half a billion dollars. Would you explain, sir, why your record on taxes is better than your two competitors here at the table? Happy to. First of all, we raised fees by $240 million in our state because we had a whole series of fees that hadn't been raised in some cases in decades, so we brought them up to the cost of providing services. These were not broad-based fees that were required for all people to pay, rather for specialized services. But let's talk about taxes. Lowering taxes grows the economy. Lowering taxes helps build jobs and helps working families. And so I strongly have been of the view that one of the great lessons from Ronald Reagan was that lowering taxes helped build our economy. Senator McCain was one of two Republicans who voted against the Bush tax cuts. I believe the Bush tax cuts helped our economy grow and are one of the reasons that we're not in a recession today. Senator McCain continues to believe, based upon his comments on uh, Meet the Press today, that that was the right vote to take. And I respect that that's his view. I just happen to disagree with it. As governor, I fought tirelessly to reduce taxes. We cut taxes some 19 times in our state. Not as many times as I wanted to. But I was able to cut taxes with the help of the legislature time after time. And we held down spending. At the same time, Governor Huckabee has a fine record. He says he lowered taxes 94 times. I believe him. Net-net, however, the tax burden in Arkansas was raised by $500 million. I believe the figure is from his state. So we have different records when it comes to taxes. I believe it's critical for our economy going forward that we lower taxes again. And we do so for the middle class. And so I proposed a special savings plan for people of middle incomes. And that savings plan is this. Any interest income or dividend income or capital gains earned by people earning less than $200,000 a year should be taxed at the new rate of zero. Let people save their money for whatever purpose they'd like to save. I believe that will help stimulate our economy, create the economic base for growth of our new jobs, and make it easier for middle-income folks to make ends meet. Thank you. Senator McCain, you have a minute to respond. Well, you know, when I first came to Congress, we were in the middle of the Reagan Revolution, and I was proud to be a foot soldier in that revolution. And we cut taxes, but we cut spending. And Ronald Reagan insisted that we cut spending because he knew that it was vital if we are going to keep the deficit down and not have the fiscal difficulties we have today, if we had to cut spending. I'm proud to have supported those tax cuts. You know, as a matter of fact, interestingly, I'm proud to have the support of Graham and Rudman, which were the, the spending cut limits of Jack Kemp, who has announced today that he's supporting me, a supply sider. And I believe that if we had done what I wanted to do, and that's cut taxes, and at the same time cut spending, we'd be talking about more tax cuts today. But we let spending get out of control, and we know what happened. We lost our election, we lost our way, and we allowed the deficits to go up, and unfortunately, 
we have allowed us to betray some of the principle, one of the principles of the Republican Party. I'm in favor of tax cuts. We'll do them, but we'll cut spending when I'm president of the United States. But, but Senator McCain, when you look at the fact that we survived 9-11, that we survived Hurricane Katrina, terrible blows to the economy, yep. and the economy kept growing, a lot of people say that's because of the Bush tax cuts that you voted against. Well, I, and when we see what happened to spending, and we have a bridge to nowhere of $233 million to an island with 50 people on it. And we have former members of Congress who are now residing in federal prison because of the spending and corruption. My friend, we have to, if we're going to restore the confidence of the American people and our Republican base first, we're going to have to cut the spending, we're going to have to eliminate the pork barrel and wasteful spending. And I'm proud to tell you, Chris, in 24 years as a member of Congress, I've never asked for nor received a single earmark or pork barrel project for my state. And I guarantee you, I'll veto those bills. I'll ask for the line item veto, and I'll veto them, and I'll make the authors of them famous. And we'll get spending under control, and then we'll be able to have some physical sanity and restore trust and confidence on the part of the American people. Governor Romney, does that answer your concerns? No. No, it does not, because frankly, one of the things that we did to get ourselves out of the recession, as we came out of 9-11, we were going into recession, we had the internet bubble boost, this president took a very bold action. He said, I'm going to cut taxes. And he did so, and that helped our economy turn around. Now, we've also heard for years a lot of people in Washington talk about how they're going to cut spending and cut out earmarks, and year after year spending grows and earmarks grow, even under Republican leadership. And that's why change is going to have to begin with us. And this isn't something I've just talked about, it's something I've done. As governor, I cut spending. In my first year, our bat budget actually went down. I cut state employment when I was governor. We cut back spending. I vetoed literally hundreds of items. And at the same time, I cut taxes 19 times and kept fighting to cut taxes. So you have a choice. You can select somebody who wants to fight for those things, or you can select somebody who's actually done those things. And I've got a record of cutting spending and cutting taxes. I'm going to bring the rest of you in, but I want to give you, Senator McCain, a chance to respond oh, sure. to that. <laughs> Look, ask, ask uh, Jack Abramoff, uh, who's in prison today, uh, a guy who uh, was a corrupt lobbyist and his friends, if I haven't cut spending. Ask the Air Force in Boeing, where I saved $2 billion, $2 billion, by fighting against a bogus Air, uh, Air Force tanker deal. Ask the chairman of the Appropriations Committee, who calls me the sheriff, of the millions and millions of dollars that I've fought against and kept out of these appropriations bills. I think, uh, I think it was a reason why I wasn't elected Miss Congeniality in the United States Senate. I have a record of saving billions uh, for the American taxpayers. Uh, Governor Huckabee, uh, you have also been a target of uh, some of the uh, tax ads from Governor Romney. I've noticed that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have all seen uh, also a TV ad, not from Governor Romney, of you back in the old days, about 100 pounds ago, and mm -hmm several years ago in front of the Arkansas, Arkansas State Legislature basically calling for any kind of tax. Mm -hmm. And according to our study, uh, during your time, 10 years as governor, you raised taxes net increase of half a billion dollars. So does Mitt Romney have a point when he talks about your record as a tax cutter? Well, first of all, you know, the, the semantics about taxes and fees, if you're a small business owner or you pay the fee, it's as much out of your pocket. You can call it a fee, you can call it a tax. It's still money the government's taking from you. It's the same thing. Here's what I do know. I know that there had never been a broad-based tax cut in the 160-year history of my state, and I signed the first one. I know that I cut taxes 94 times, and the taxes we cut helped families. We eliminated the uh, marriage penalty. We doubled the child tax care credit. We indexed the income tax for inflation. We created the property taxpayer bill of rights. We froze property taxes for seniors so they didn't lose their homes due to increases in property taxes. When I became governor, from the time I left, 10 and a half years later, sales tax was up one penny and the income tax was the same. It's just a lot of people didn't have to pay it because we raised the threshold at which they did. But here's something else we did. We took a $200 million deficit, turned it into an $850 million surplus. We improved 